in the the prison, I, ha I had a kind of a. I used to go. I used to do running as well. You could run out in the, you could run out in the fields. See, in the summer you had field nights, and you could go out on a Monday, Wednesday, and a Saturday. I used to go out and run about eight mile, and uh, I was mostly into cardiovascular, and uh, I learnt the road machine. That was good. That that does everybody your body, and uh, the bikes. And when I done weights, I can say I wasn't a, a heavy weightlifter. I was only lifting 80, 90 kilo. And I was doing lightweights just, just to keep myself fit. Whereas there was other guys pushing 200 and just nearly breaking their back. Mm. But I was I was never into the, the, the heavyweights. But I, I, you were allowed to go to the gym quite a lot. Did they have boxing rings? No, but they had boxing matches. Yeah. They had squared goes. You're so right. they did down at the gym. Yeah. Where it, where it, where it be organised. Some that happened really, but some they would say, right, go down to the gym on Saturday and get into this room and we'll sort this out. Yeah. And there was one occasion, my pal Warren Slaney, we were up in uh, Franklin's and there was this guy, uh, Warren, Warren the news still in. We came a good pals, anyway. Warren's in for killing two, two people in Leicestershire. It was called the Hamburger Wars. And uh, he stole about 40 grand or something. But Warren's still protesting his innocent in it. Innocent's just known he's been running about 25 years at least. And uh, he could box. And so we were up in Franklin's and uh, there was this guy now telling me that they're cooking. So the, the, the yardies, a lot of yardies and that. So they used to get into the, the we had a kind of routine where they would get into their cooking first. They, they would be making jerk chicken, black eyed peas and all of that. And I became a lover of that, I liked that, so I did. And I used to say, I'm going to make me that, I'll get your chicken and black eyed peas and that. And uh, so Warren was in the kitchen in Franklin, and he was arguing with this guy, the guy was about 22 stone, a yard, and he was, he was in, he was in for 50 kilo of coke or something, he's in it 25 years. So I had an argument, people kind of broke it up and Warren shouting. And so they arranged a square goal. A fight match in the gym, and I went. I said, I think if Kimo Warner's met his match here, Warren knocked fuck at him. Did he? <laughs> Warren knocked fuck at him. How long did it last? About three or four minutes. Really? And Warren had to get dragged after the guy. He fucking he was kicking his head and everything. Yeah. No, it's there's there's a lot. See, no, no, what, no, no, what I liked about the Londoners and things like that. Right, they're all in, in the in the prison. They're all health mo motivated. Mm. The the they got the the treat the treat the treat the prisons as a health centre. Yeah. And and they, they eat properly, you know. I used to drink loads of iron brew and all of that and I used to take sugar in my tea mm. and uh I stopped doing that and started drinking loads of water, I still do that to this day. Yeah. And uh no sugar in my tea and they they, they, they they treated it as a they're very courteous to the staff, mm -hmm. the Londoners and that and this is guys doing twenty years five years for heavy drug charges and armed robberies and things like that. Guy from Brinks Mark was in another channel and Mickey and uh, so they were always polite to the officers, but see if anybody started on them. Mm. Sean, they would get one warning, maybe two at the most, because they didn't want trouble. They wanted you just do their time mm -hmm. and get out. Yeah. But see if thing me what would they would do, uh, guy would be in the pool room, couple of thing me couple of things in a sock mm -hmm. and just kind of smash fuck out the guy in the pool room yeah but you would always get a warning now people just just jump in mm -hmm. they were very polite and courteous the the londoners did anyone try you well did that did i tell you about the, the, the fight did which I one did i tell you about the fight where i get my dislocated shoulder did no, i get into that one you did gave I, me some last night but you've not discussed it today have i not did it discussed yeah. it when i was with yeah. a guy perry worry he was in for a uh, killing a cop uh, and my guy Charlie McGee and Guy Harley they were in London and uh, they were doing a bank and they came out the bank and uh, an off duty copper get shot so I became pals with, with Perry and I was up in Franklin's and I was there for a few months I think it was 96 and uh, they moved me, they just moved me for four months. I found out later they didn't want me to be in the same hall as my two thing, we were in the same wing as my two coaches. So I arrived, I think it was a Tuesday or something, in Long Larton. I'd been there before. And uh, Perry and that was there and Billy the Fish. 
for Manchester. I remember well, he was doing the bottom flat. So they says to his look, Ian, this is going to be a wee party for you on Friday. Where he says, I'm getting a bit of puffing at him. It's cannabis. And uh, Billy, he, he, he always made drink. So I says, I'll look forward to Friday then. So we went to sell on the Friday and uh, sitting there and just ch chatting away. So this guy comes in and uh, he went like that. He says to Billy the Fish, he says, is there any extra drink there? I mean, in the hooch? And he says, no, mate. He says, uh, I think we've only got enough for himself. And he went, all oh, right, they bought her, blah, 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 blah. And uh, then, he, then, then he kind of says something cheeky. And I, I didn't know who he was. And I just stood up and I went, here, mate. I says, get to fuck out of the cell. I says, you're not my cruiser. I didn't even know what a cruiser was myself then. <laughs> I just thought cruising, cruising for booze. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked at me as if he was going to punch me and I just went out with the door. So Perry and Billy went, by the way, he's a fucking bit of a madman. They were calling him Mad Dog. And there was another a guy called Mad Dog up in Scotland. And this guy was called, I says, fuck him. I says, I'm not going to fuck. I had a Rangers top on. You could wear all your own stuff. So, uh, so about an hour later, you know, half later, it was it was near the end of the it was near the end of the association period. It was about quarter to nine, ten to nine. Fucking door flies open, and this mad dog guy goes at ah, me. You, you fucking bastard! And they try to punch me, but he missed me. So Perry's jumped up, Billy's jumped up, and before you know it, we're in the bottom landing, and uh, Long Latin and this top security neck, and we're all fine like fuck. But we were using jam jars, you know, for the drink. And uh, I kept running at these jam jars and I was running out and I was smashing where this fucking mad dog scene. That then I slipped and he, he was tight to fucking get me. And I slipped through all the booze and fuck knows what. And the bells were going off and all that, the alarms. And uh, and before the screws rushed in, I've slipped in the flare with the floor. And uh, he's took a run at me and he was going to kick me in the face. And I really up so. And he's fucking kicked my finger. Uh, my shoulder so before the screws come in I get pulled into a cell with a couple of guys and, uh, and I was like oh my fuck I think my arm's broke and he went oh you're probably right but, but the screws knew I was in there so they come in so so I say it was a Friday night so they went like right come on we know you're involved so I was the last person to, to get up to the surgery you know and the other screws were all lined up in the in the wing and up the hall no, they were up to surgery, and I was walking all the way up like that. I've gone, fuck, fuck, fuck. And they went, and I could hear all the screws going, fucking hell, that was some fight, that. So, sixes. So, I've got up there, and they've put me in the same room as Billy the Fish and uh, Perry. Perry had a couple of teeth out, and uh, Billy had cut her head. But they had a bit of damage to them. The other people, they were kept apart. So, Billy and a. Uh, Billy. And Perry get dealt with an hour or two later, and they were away. So I'm still sitting there, and, and they're waiting on a doctor coming in to see me. And I heard them all kind of going, like, oh, we should be in the fucking social club. The, the prison officers are right to go for a drink on a Friday night, and they've got a social club next to uh, the prison. So they came to me, and, it, and their attitude was kind of a, oh, just say he's all right, and fuck it. But I says, no, that went to full treatment which rang because it was really really killing me even though I took hash and drink and uh, so the doctor went like that so they tried to cut my toe and I went yeah you're not cutting that it's a ranger's toe <laughs> so, so they pulled it off us and they were laughing and the doctor went like that he says no he says he needs to go to hospital he says you've dislocated your shoulder I didn't really know what that was but sure it's I, I think you're better getting your arm broke because mm. a dislocated shoulder is sore so I'm waiting and waiting and I'm going fucking and, and the drinks kind of are wearing off and the hash and that and I'm saying what the fuck's keeping them so I get took I get took down to the, the gate get put into the prison van I'm a cat A and the next minute there's fucking sirens and all that and they've took me with arm police they've took me to Redditch that's what it was they took me to what Worcestershire Redditch Hospital and when I got out the van there was it was, a, it was a mad scene for me because I'm going oh this for me and uh, country machine guns and hats and all that 
So I was still cuffed and I get put under in the Pilt Marman. So I get took back to the prison and they put me into the block and Perry was in there and other people in there and other bit. And I uh, shouting out the window and I says, oh, Perry, I says, I've got thing me, a dislocated shoulder and I've got the sling and that on. And, uh, and it was, wasn't it a couple of days later I found out what the problem was why they were taking so long to take me to the hospital. They had a, they had a chief constable talking to a governor at the gate of the prison saying, should we take Ian McDonald just in the ordinary van or should it be an armed convoy? And because I'd only arrived three days, they thought I was trying to escape. But see, to tell you the truth, see if I could have escaped. I wouldn't have because I was such pain in my arm. So that, that, that's why that happened. But a couple of days after that, they put, they put me and Perry back in the wing and kept these other guys because Perry was well respected. No, the other guys are going, I'm going to fucking kill these cunts and all that. So I thought nothing else was happening there, but then my door opened and uh, and the screws were over shields. They're like, right, come on, get up. You're moving and I'm, I've got, I'm got my sling on my thing there. So they took me to the block and I thought I was just going into the block, but there was a governor there and he says to me, uh, you're going, he didn't tell me where I was going, he says you've been placed on GOAD and in England that means good order and discipline. Mm. What the days they can put you to another prison for a month and then bring you back. Mm. So, the, so the, they took me to Belmarsh and uh, they put me, I wasn't in this high security unit, I was in the ordinary prison, but they put me in the block there. And the next morning, Screws have come in, took my mattress. I says, We need to. I says, Oh, this is the rules. And then the next morning, two prison officers came in and they went, I think he needs a shave. I'm 35, 36 years of age. It's in Boston, things like that. You maybe get told to have a shave of detention. And, I, and they say, See, have a I says, I'm not having a shave. I says, I'm not a wee boy. They says, Well, Rangers and Celtic are playing tonight and see that radio sitting there. See if you don't take a shave. They says, Well, take your radio. I says, I need bother. So I went out to exercise and I came back and my fucking radio was away. Mm. Dirty bastards took my radio. I only wanted to listen to the football. Mm. And I think I'd been about six years at the time and, and I used to listen to Five Live and it was a football. And uh, so I was shouting out the window and all of that. Anybody tell me the thing that the Scory Rangers and Selly? They're shouting, shut up, you Scottish bastard, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so they were playing wee games there as well. 